G'day guys, I am Ash J. This is Ash J Podcasting. Right now, we're starting the show off right. The Pointer Sisters, Automatic. Some of that feel-good 80s music. See, I really am starting to sound like a radio DJ now. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready for the Pointer Sisters with Automatic. So yeah, this is the podcast, episode number three, a very special episode because I have none other than my very own mother, Catherine Brinko. Catherine, say hello to everyone. Hello, everyone. (laughs) (laughs) Now, we've uh, we've taken a stab at doing a podcast together, but due to uh, me not being smart enough and putting my phone on silent, which I'm definitely doing right now. (laughs) <laughs> we've had to start all over again but basically um how do we get stuck back into this from right where we left off well to give you a little brief introduction here the song choice um going with something that is familiar to my mother um growing up in the 80s you're a fan of the pointer sisters yep she yep. definitely was let's talk music what, what do you okay what, what was back when you were my age Right, the ripe oh, age what? of 26 years 26. old, which was back in 1804. Anyway, we won't. Shut <laughs> <up>. <laughs> and the gold rush was booming. And <laughs> right, no worries. <laughs> no, but what 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 was the uh, what was the music that you listened to back in the day? I know personally, disco. But elaborate. What what was the scene? 26. Well, um, when I was 26, it was disco, right? Yeah. I was going to say, when I was 26, I was married. I had two children. Mm-hmm. Um, Pointer Sisters were a big deal, you know, because anything that was happy, boppy, got you jumping, mm. was the music of the time. Right. You 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 learnt the words and you sang along mm-hmm. no matter where you were. Right. Um, yeah, it was disco, but it was also... So to say, as in comparison to today's music, it's... Well, you have no idea what the hell they're saying. You have no idea what's going and, on. And um, if they say anything at all. Mm. And then if they do, it's the same word all the way through. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's not music. That's not music. So no. what do you remember music being like? What what, what was music catchy, to you? Catchy tunes. That even now, you walk into a shop and they'll play 80s music, and you look around and most people are singing that song, mm-hmm. whether it be Stevie Wonder or Elton John or Cyndi Lauper. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows those songs. Like those iconic names you mentioned. These are people who actually wrote songs and sang music and actually had real instruments to them as well. Yeah. You know? And... and and they had a voice, and it wasn't just machines, it was actually their voice. Mm-hmm. As strange as they were, like, I remember the first time I ever heard uh, Cindy Lauper singing, thinking, oh, my God. Mm-hmm. And she was pretty out there at the time, like, for Absolutely. what she wore and Absolutely. stuff like that. But that's what the 80s were all about, especially. And, like, Madonna. I mean, she was whew, way beyond her time. Mm-hmm. She, she was. She caused a lot of drama. I Absolutely. think she'd be the major She's still doing it to queen. today. <laughs> She's still doing it. She hasn't stopped. One of the original, not divas, but drama queens. Well, you want to talk divas. <laughs> I think there's only one original there's diva. There's only in, one original diva. And who is that one original diva? I believe her name would be Sher. The, the yeah, artist known as Sher. <laughs> Well, then again, I was thinking about this. I mean, there is a good lot of divas. I mean, for me, being biased, being raised with you, you listen to Cher and, you know, even I've, you know, as gay as it sounds, I'm a little bit of a fan of her music as well. But there's there's other people out there too, like Mariah Carey. She's very much a diva. No, I'd put her in the drama queen More drama queen. Diva is Tina Turner. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Whitney Houston. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, as we said, Cindy Lauper. Um, yeah, they were divas. What do you think of uh, today's generation with probably the most notable diva out there, Beyonce? What do you think about her? I actually don't mind her. Mm. I, I don't mind her at all. Um, she's catchy. I think it's, she's one of those, like, I see a lot of little kids mm. that, try to mimic her mm-hmm. and when I say little kids you know they might be five years old 
but they know who she is they know how she dances and i think that's cute mm. i think when chil- when children mimic a celebrity like that and and you see them happy then that celebrity is a good thing mm-hmm. um, it's when they mimic things that you wouldn't imagine children would that you realize it's they're not right if, if it makes sense well this is the thing i always keep saying nowadays if you can think about it like there's worse you can think of or as good that it, it's happening you know like whatever you can imagine in today's day and yeah. age if you can think of something so disturbing it's happening yeah. like there is no filter nowadays with a lot of people yeah. so, and what children see they'll do monkey see monkey do monkey see monkey do mm-hmm. yeah so what you instill in your kids when they're young is what they will carry through into their adult life. This is actually a good thing. Um, we, we've spoke about this before, about like um, trends that are happening now and that are like things like, uh, I don't know, for instance, words that I mentioned that you're not familiar with. Like I, I said to you the other day, I'm like, oh, you know, YOLO. And you're like, YOLO. Like yeah. You looked at me like I you know, told you about some new dessert that was out or something like that. Like, no, I thought it was a brother to Rollo. <laughs> yeah it's an it's a cousin in chocolate no yeah. yolo like that is a, a saying that gets used a lot now and that's you know what stands for uh, you only live once you know terms and stuff they're like all that abbreviations aren't they they're yeah. not words well no 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 that that's just one example or trends like you know dance trends now just touching back on music now beyonce she is incredibly popular like definitely probably the number one pop R&B singer, I guess, if you want to call her that, you know, out there right now, that, you know, she's a household name, basically. Like, she is, mm. for today, she's a legend for today's generation and, you know, no doubt will probably go down in history. But there's a lot of trends like dancing nowadays. Have you heard of twerking? No. You don't know what twerking is? No. Yeah, don't even have the most vaguest clue. Not the vaguest clue. If you had to take a guess, what would you say it is? I have no idea, honestly. No idea. <laughs> okay, well, I don't know Go if... Go on, I, shock me. No, I don't know if I... <laughs> I'm thinking about it now, and I'm like, no, I don't know if I want you to know about this. <laughs> because Why? this will let you just know that, like, you know, all hope is lost. <laughs> I think that already, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's it's basically it's a form of dancing nowadays mostly women do it i'm sure some gay men out there do it too <laughs> where it's just basically throwing your ass up on someone and grinding on them i've got news for you honey it's been around for a long time it, it, when <laughs> discos were first on the scene uh girls that were on the dance floor what you now call pole dancing uh-huh. You know, this sort of stuff, what you... There's a bit more than pole dancing involved. Well, what you experience now... I mean, there's a pole involved, but not the type. <laughs> but... What you experience in life now has come from one side of the door yeah. to the other side of the door. Right. If you know what I mean. So what was behind closed doors in the, say, 60s and 70s mm-hmm. is now on the open side of the door. Right. So, you know... Yes, it's probably more promiscuous or more in your face, but it was always there. It was always there. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. People haven't really changed that much. There's just more people. That's a very interesting. Uh, I've never. That's a very interesting quote. Yeah. Say it again. Well, people really haven't changed that much. There's just more people. It's true. So where you might have had, let's just say, twenty people do it in the eighties, you might have. 20,000 people do it now. Mm -hmm. That's why you notice it. So, more or less, you know, it's just humans being humans. We're just doing human like behavior. Like, we we look around and say, oh my gosh, all these single mothers. Oh my God. They were single mothers for a long time. It's just now there's a lot more of them. There's a lot more. Goes back to what I just said. Mm. You know, nothing's really changed except there's more people. So, through. The decades growing up, obviously, you have a lot more under your belt than me. Mm-hmm. What What's a decade that sticks out specifically to you and why, growing up? Um, I think for me, it was probably the 60s because I was only in primary school mm-hmm. and they were the innocent years. 
you didn't know about life and hardships and having to pay bills and and survive from one week to the next you were just an innocent kid so Mm. life was always good was it the 70s when things started to really shake things up because war became more no i wouldn't say that in my case because i got married young why because i wanted to get married Mm -hmm. uh no other reason um um reality set in that you had to be a grown-up and being a grown-up means you had to have responsibilities so 70s got a little tough the fun started to end essentially your youth the 60s that was that was where it was at well you're a kid you're innocent Mm. you know you'd sing and skip and play and that was your life Mm. you dreamed that's when you created your best dreams when you were a kid yeah Uh, as you grew life gets in the way of your dreams Mm -hmm. sometimes you've got to put them aside and come back to them later sometimes you never get to go back you know you get responsibilities bills yeah mortgage mortgage all that it all picks up family yeah you shift your dreams from yourself to your kids yep and hope for them if you're lucky enough you'll go back to your dreams so basically what you're saying is growing up sucks I Pretty totally much. agree with Pretty you, much. yep. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I've decided I don't want to be an adult anymore. Oh, really? Yep. Okay. So I'm going to hand in my resignation. Oh, cool. I'm not too sure who you do that with, but when <laughs> when you get there, can you mention my name as well? Cause... Well, I figured I hand it in to my kids now that they're all grown up. Oh, okay. That's it. I'm done as a mum. It's time to be Catherine. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm liking my new life, so it it's, yeah. It's good to be free of hassle for a change. Yeah. And now, we touched on it a little bit, and I'm not going to jump into it again. I mean, as I said, we've taken a stab at, you know, doing this podcast, but once again, we're interrupted, so this is the second attempt. But needless to say, to describe my upbringing or our life as a family together was never easy. Far Mm. from it. I I don't think any family has an easy life. Well, I mean, there's some people that are born into privilege. We definitely... Privilege doesn't make it easy. No? You know, I I hear a lot of people say, well, she's better off, she's got a lot more money than me. It buys you a lot more. It doesn't necessarily make your life any easier. Mm -hmm. To quote something that we've said before, poor financially, but rich spiritually. Yeah. That's a very accurate assessment of, I believe, growing up. You can have a family of people living in the same house that's a family of strangers. Mm-hmm. Um, if I had to have that opposed to what I've got because that's got money and mine hasn't, I wouldn't take it. So basically, I mean, you know, you've smartened up to the fact that, you know, which a lot of people don't, uh, money is not the be-all, end-all. Look, there's everybody has responsibilities in life and there are debts in life that must be paid. Mm-hmm. But having an abundance of money doesn't make you happy. Absolutely. It, it, no. No. I'm happy with what I've got. Mm-hmm. Sure, I'd love more. Who wouldn't love more? But I'm not about to go out and rob, shoot, or do anything stupid to get it. Mm. Um, life is what you make it. And especially because you were raised with good morals, and that is something that is lost today. Yeah. Especially with the younger generation. And this is when I'm going to sound like an old man sitting but on a porch. I have, to, I have to interrupt there. Before you go blaming the younger generation... They learn from the older generation. Oh, and the yeah. older generation that raised them didn't instill them in with, with um, you know, morals. So it's not all the younger generation's fault. No, 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 no. You're right, absolutely. But little by little, as we progress as human beings, we definitely uh, shift into a, a different form, even different forms of communication like now, you know. I remember in high school learning about, like, you know, Shakespeare and, you know, the dialect in which they used to speak, you know, that, that ye old English and everything, tis, twas, and, you know, that we grow and we're growing so fast, especially right now. We're at a point where the future is just, it's here, you know. It, it's here. It has advanced a lot very, very quickly. I would say from 2000 to 15, it has you, 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 boomed. But, but do you ever notice that? Nobody says that anymore, like, in the future. Like, because we're here. Like, yeah. you know, it's, in the future, I'm going to get this. Or, you know, in the future, they're going to have this. Like, in fact, no, if I you think can think it, it, there's already somebody who's yeah, made it. That's right. I think the future has come way too soon. Absolutely. Way too soon. 
you know, we go from having a phone that can do this, this, and this to within six months something that can do twice as much as that. Yep. For what reason? I don't know. Yeah. But it's it's no longer um, an accessory. It's an appendage. Absolutely. You'll be born with it stuck to the back of your neck or whatever soon. I'd probably put it on your wrist and well. you can't really access it from the back of your neck. <laughs> not, not unless you've got eyes in the back of your head. Do you know your... what I mean? I mean, like, I mean like a barcode <laughs> across the back of your head. Yeah. I don't know. But it's just become such a ridiculous word, world that, you know, communication doesn't exist. It, it's only through social media. Yeah. You can have a thousand friends on social media and you only speak to two in real life. Or none at all. Yeah. Well, that's sad. That's mm. really sad. And there's people who live a life right now for the sake of saying, oh, I did this, I did that. And, yeah, they, they, you know, there's people who fake their lives right now. Like, mm. oh, I'm I'm doing this here, you know, like showing off, like, how awesome their life is when really that person is suffering from mass depression, you know what I mean? Like, they're questioning their existence every single day, but yet to the outside world, you know, it looks like they're the happiest person ever, you know? I mean, I think especially uh, that the the whole depression thing that really came into play a lot with Robin Williams passing a lot of people started really taking acknowledgement to like okay this is serious a lot more people are getting a lot more sadder and and do you think now. that's because the world is richer and we have more material things that we become more depressed yeah absolutely that definitely plays a part in it technology um especially i mean mm. as good as yeah. even we're using it right now you know, and our voices reaching other people, you know, it's it has its wonders, but for, you know, every good side, there's another bad side to it Absolutely. as well. And Absolutely. I think, yeah, that is, especially there's, there's a lot of studies going on with social media and, you know, suicide rates and stuff like that. I mean, you know, even, I, I, I used to be one of the people that would brush it off when I hear about this whole cyberbullying thing. And I think, what, you know what I mean? Like, actually, try getting punched in the face in real life or shoved in a locker, you know what I mean? Like my, I remember my early high school years, they weren't fun, you know? But then neither were mine. Don't, don't think this has just come about, this bullying from now. That's why I said to you, the only difference between then and now is there's more people because we got bullied at school too, you know? People used to pick on me because I've got darker skin. Mm-hmm. Now that I'm an adult, it, it's a... Uh, an it works in my favour. People love, oh my God, I love the colour of your skin. Yeah. Whereas once upon a time, that was what went, went against me. So I don't think bullying has come about of, of this time. Bullying has always been there. Yeah. It's always been there. No, but what I'm trying to say is that now it's, you know, back in the day, you used to be able to say, you know what, like, look, you know, chin up, you know, brush yourself off. This isn't going to matter. This isn't going to define you. Nowadays, it's becoming harder and harder to accept that because of social media and the whole, you know, you know, people, there, there's people out there that are getting bullied and social media makes it, I think, it, it multi- multiplies the effect because it's, it's not a physical thing. Ment- the mental aspect, which is something that not a lot of people actually thought about back in the day, you know, look, me- remember being back in the, in the, in the day, like, I mean, I remember just before I had gone to school, you know, ADD, that was, there's no such thing as that. No, Nobody knew what that was. Yeah, but they have labels for everything now. That's what I'm saying. There's a label for everything, and everything, as, as, as more people there is, some things are increased, so... So if they can't fix it, they find a label for it. Absolutely. And, and you know, these things come about, so they say, from the different things people eat that... that um, well, even the food we eat now, it's not what we used to eat. You know, we had this discussion about, you know, the stuff that you buy from the supermarket. That's not real fruit. That's not real vegetables. Those things are pumped with steroids and grown in a factory and, you know... Uh, you, I mean, you, you're growing your own garden right now. Yeah. You have but, your but own... Even, like, just even when you talked before about... <clears throat> oh, I don't know if it was this podcast, but about the fact that two parents work these days so children have to get themselves off to school they get left lunch money you know they come home at the end of the day parents are still working because they've still got to pay for these things so kids you know not always eating the right things Mm -hmm. um getting pumped with all these things that have additives and all the rest of it and Mm -hmm. all of a sudden we've got these 
overweight kids or unhealthy kids whose fault is that is that the kids that have to look after themselves or the parents that are too busy worrying about if the kids have got the latest phone yeah i don't know you know that that's a really touchy subject but i worked i worked part-time i was always home when my kids come home from school they always got their you know milo or cookies and cakes and all that they didn't spend a lot of time on their own um we didn't have everything that was available we're a very close family but is that a good thing or a bad thing because when i look back i don't think about what i had as a kid i think about the fact that my mother was always there for me so i like to think that when my kids look back it's not going to be about oh you know i had this computer that computer it would be more the fact that i had a home that was warm and comfortable and and happy to live there yeah so think about it people you know the fact that you buy your kids all these things doesn't make them a better person having to struggle a little helps make them a better person absolutely teaching them morals and manners makes them good people yeah and you know what if i could go back in time now i wouldn't want to change my upbringing i i I think you know we always said it this way that you know we never had it the best no but at the same time the worst worst. we never had it the worst no i remember you asking me a while ago mum if you could change one thing in your life what would it be um looking back and I, I said to you then, I wouldn't change not one minute. Not one minute. And, and life hasn't been easy. But then I wouldn't be and you wouldn't be the person that we are today if because I changed one minute. Mm-hmm. So you, you can't go backwards. None of us can go backwards. We can't change anything. We can only look forward and only make life better for ourselves in the time that lays ahead. To quote my late father, Peter Jensen, you know, Move with the times. Or get left behind. You'll get left behind, absolutely. You don't get an option. You've got to move with the times. Stop looking for pity. Stop looking for handouts. Make yourself a better person. Be happy with yourself. If you're not happy with yourself, change yourself. Hell, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Absolutely. There's no there's no time limit. If anything, you would have wished that you'd made... I mean, speaking on the previous podcast, I mean, we have to kind of keep referencing back to it, but... Uh, we are talking about your weight loss. You've lost how much again? 42. 42 kilos. kilos. A whole person. Mm. And, I mean, you did that at what age? When did it really kick in? When did the gears turn? 52, maybe? 52. So, for these people, I am that much older. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But a lot of people do think you're actually younger than you actually are. Like... Hmm. I see people your age that, you know, that that, that I might happen to serve in my store, you know, working in retail and it's like... age is just a number, really. If if you're going to get paranoid about how old you are, um, that's all you're ever going to be paranoid. It it doesn't bother me. Hmm. It doesn't bother me. My thing at the moment is to be healthy, to live a long, healthy life and to be happy. You know, that's the only two things that will get you through life. Mm-hmm. We can want for everything, but they're material things. We can't take them with us. And that is such an important thing today, like for, for the generation to come, is that we we used to take our health for granted. Mm-hmm. Now, this is something that you have to put into perspective because, like, yeah, mentioning that, you know, all those the fruits and vegetables that you buy from the su- supermarket that are, you know, pumped full of drugs that, that are not natural, I mean, these... You, you have to make the right decisions because there's so many easy alternatives. Ash, at the end of the day, if you don't look after yourself, who's going to look after you? Absolutely. You, know, you, you can't expect your parents or your kids to look after you. You are your own responsibility. Mm-hmm. You got yourself that way. Nobody force-fed you that cheeseburger or whatever. You did that. Yeah. So you've got to fix that. And, and when you take ownership of that, your life will change. What do you think about the people that don't take ownership of that? Mm-hmm. And they're filled with excuses. <laughs> wow. Um, I get a little angry because I think, you know, everybody says, oh, I want to lose weight, so lose it. Hmm. If you really want to lose it, you'll lose it. it. It's not easy, but damn, it's worth it. Oh, I can't begin to tell you how much it's worth it. And it's not going to happen overnight, but it will happen if you want it to happen. We all we all fall over, we all stumble, we all make mistakes. Life gets in the way. But, you know, you pick yourself up and you move on. And, and you know, if I ever do another podcast with you and people really want to know uh, about losing weight, that's fine. We can do a whole, um, you know, segment on that. But 
all I want to say is I do feel sorry for people that are having hard times but at the same time look inside yourself and and grab hold of that inner you and and run with it because inside everybody there's good there's good and bad and we know the difference so grab hold of that goodness and and become a good person and when you're a good person things go right believe in yourself and things will happen and be who you are don't be afraid to be who you are and yeah and as well as health happiness is something that you know you should constantly try to attain don't settle for a certain point of life that you know that, that you're happy with you mean we i remember one big thing in high school and i know i i told you this the other day uh, i i wasn't really the smartest kid in high school i didn't pay all that much attention i wish i did but you know that's i was just a different person back then i was always that kid just cracking jokes at the back of the class but the one time i i uh i, I had an answer and stuck my hand up in science class i think it was in like year nine and it was the teacher asking the question when do we stop learning as humans and we don't. We never. Never. never stop that learning. was the answer. And that was, uh, it, for some reason, it just stuck out to me like, I have to point this out because I know this. And I felt good about myself. Like, oh, yeah, that, we never do. So you you should always be learning, growing, moving, doing something. And even if you're not registering that you're learning, you're learning. Yeah. If somebody says something to you, you read something, you see something, you're constantly learning. Constantly you never, learning. You never lose in life. You either no. win or you, you know, learn. You know, you say, oh, people float in and out of your life but you know when they do float in and out they leave something you will learn something from that experience whether it be good or bad i don't know but you learn something from every experience in life you take the good with the bad you take the good bits you you grow from that and you take the experience of the bad thing and you learn from that Mm. so be strong if you are going through a hard time what advice would you have for future generations though (laughs) <laughs> always I mean, tell your mother you love her <laughs> because she'll always love you no matter what um that's true or can i give i love you mom. if i had to, <laughs> that's good because damn i love you um <laughs> what can i tell you don't be afraid to tell you, you, whoever it is that you love them you know we fear that telling someone we love them is is like a sign of weakness a sign of weakness exposing your heart yes your heart's going to be broken numerous times hell don't tell me about it i know but that doesn't mean you should shut it off so future generations need to express their feelings need to look at each other and smile Absolutely. you know you don't even have to say a word you smile at someone someone's going to smile back at you mm. that's after they think you're crazy but anyway a smile no but it does wonders like and if someone does say hello to you say hello back doesn't matter if you don't know them especially now not to sound like an old man harping on as i can easily do but mm. that is the thing nowadays we've become so sheltered you know i mean i'm not saying me specifically but i do notice a lot of people i talk to you know, eye contact, that's a big thing, you know, yeah. especially ever since I've, I've read a, that book on body language, you know, it's not a lot of people look at each other or they don't notice the things they do, the subtle nuances like just, you know, the, the eye contact, that goes a long way, smiling, yes. And then when your eyes make contact, smile, so the person doesn't feel threatened or weird, you just smile at and them. And there's something behind that, like why do people, why is it when I look at someone else and I smile and they feel good and smile back? Because it's contagious, smiling is contagious. Mm. You, you, someone smiles at you, you smile back and so on and so forth. In this age of technology taking over, we're slowly losing grasp of what we are meant to do as humans, like interacting yeah, with one another. That's right. And the simple head nod or, you know, I mean... Of course, of everything within reason, you have to assess, you know, not, not everyone is going to be as happy as you. And mm. once again, that plays into you can't expect. But can you imagine if someone went home and said, God, I've got this real weirdo today. He actually smiled at me. I don't know who he was. He remembers you because you smile. Exactly. And, you know, you'll look back and you think, how stupid was that? But you made him smile or you made him curious as to why you smile. Mm-hmm. Life, Like I said, you know, getting to this stage of my life, Life is too short to be so angry and and so bitter and so sad. You've got to get out there and live your life and be happy and smile and and treat humans. Treat people as like if you, you want, want to be, be treated. treated. Yeah, Absolutely, like you want to be treated. And if you want, and a lot of people say that, be good. But they don't actually 
incorporate that into who they are they don't no. really and you're gonna get you know a lot of knockbacks but that's fine you just dust yourself off and get back up and try again you never give up it's ever, like the knockdowns ever, ever. that define us yeah never give up never let anybody say well you know she just quit or he just quit no no that's not why you're here mm-hmm. that's not why you're here and like i say if you need help for anything you always ask because there's always somebody that can help you mm-hmm I love once as she came to me and she said, Mum, Mum, come you have all the answers? And um, I, I said to you, it just comes with age. You don't get to this age without learning a lot of things. It, it still it, amazes me even to this day with the, the simple things that I might ask and that, you know, I, I think that you might not know of, you know, and something that might just be worth Googling. And then I ask you and I get your perspective on it and I'm like, wow. How did you, how because did you, you know? live life, it's a life experience. It's experience. And people, just let me tell you, I, I went to school to uh, year nine, so it's not like you know I've got a degree in university or anything like that. It's just life experiences. Mm. It comes naturally. You can't get through life without learning stuff, which goes back to what we said before. You know, you learn from everything. You're constantly learning, learning, learning. Well, I tell you what, for just year nine, you're definitely the most intelligent woman I know. So, oh, thank you. Congratulations, <laughs> you did well. <laughs> but obviously, I'm a bit biased because you're my mother. So, you know. Mm. But we've um we've been going on for about half an hour now. So I hope we haven't bored the pants off you. <laughs> if anything, I think this has been a, a really different podcast compared to the I've usual. Because I've tried not to swear. <laughs> Jason, take note. <laughs> uh, no, but that's. We, we, we've been more of a this is a good motivational you know inspiration type podcast giving a bit of insight to I just want everyone to know that you know uh, as much as you don't think there's anybody in this world that cares about you there doesn't have to be as long as you do if you care about you then you're going to be okay um, I love my kids to bits and there's not a lot I wouldn't do for them but at the same time I like to see them grow and and I think everybody needs to grow. And and yes, we're lucky we've got each other and some people don't have anyone to turn to. But I think if you really want to get on in this world, at the end of the day, you've got to look after yourself. Mm-hmm. And that's health-wise, mentally, the way you think, the way you act, and the way you let people treat you. Absolutely. So, you know, be good to yourself, be good to everyone else, and good will come back to you. That's it. Do good things and good things will surely return back to you so now i'll get off my little (laughs) soapbox but that's i believe that too that's with karma i'm a very firm believer of karma i believe it exists without a doubt 100 percent, and i believe it exists in more forms than most people can even imagine that yeah i mean if if you're an asshole and you treat people as such that you're gonna have asshole friends and you're gonna do asshole things and you know i'm saying asshole because i know there's another word i'd like to use but i'll I'll keep yeah. it mannered here as I'm with my mother. <laughs> but for the most part, I mean, there's always there's always a, a, a way to upgrade your life and live better and learn more from what you once knew. And there's knew. always someone worse off than you. So Absolutely. as bad as you think your life is, there's someone doing it worse. So while you're, you know, contemplating whatever it is you're contemplating, there's someone else fighting to stay alive. So... You know, we've been through the whole cancer thing, so we know that there's people that want to be here that are losing their fight and others that don't want to be here that are just being straight up stupid. Mm. You know, having a life and and becoming old is a privilege. So take care of yourself and um, good things will come to you if you're a good person. Every day is a blessing. That's it. Very much so. Anything else you'd like to elaborate on? Um, no, but if you think this um, podcast was of interest to you, let us know. And um, Ash will invite me back from the other room. <laughs> 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 and we'll do it again. And if there's anything in particular you'd like to have us talk to you about, then again, let us know. Well, look at that. Chef Catherine over here dish- dishing out all the good recipes of motivation and wisdom. and Well, you know can only do what you can do and i like to be everyone's mum and everyone's best friend and i know know? this is my podcast and i'm hosting it but somehow i feel like i'm the guest right now the next one will do you be the guest and i'll be the (laughs) host instead of ash j we'll call it cj (laughs) Uh, look we, we never 
uh, we're not usually as serious as, as we are tonight, no. but we just wanted to get across that as much as there's a funny side to Ash J, there's also a serious side, mm-hmm. and you know, with that serious side comes the good parts of his life. Um, and, and I think that'll play into like every different guest that I have on. I mean, you being the, the very second one on this mm-hmm. third episode, mm-hmm. with more to come. I mean, you, of we all are guilty of this. We all talk to people a different way oh, we're all of course. Uh, trying you know we have a certain way we talk to each other like for instance the way I've talked to Jason is definitely nowhere near and the I mean, way we I have would a very, speak to you here's that word very mm-hmm. liberal relationship as, though, as in we can talk to each other about anything mm-hmm. but there's also boundaries as to where we would go of course you know with conversation yes so so Yes, when I'm with my girlfriends, there's things I'd say to them that if you heard, you'd think, oh, my God, that's not my mother. But <laughs> Sometimes I do think that. <laughs> I'm just and like, who don't are get me you? wrong, you know, Jason, I love him to bits. Um, Jason and Ash went to school together. Mm-hmm. But sometimes I just think, you know, do we really need all them F words in one sentence? It's not really making any sense. I know? can't believe you listened to that episode. Oh. Uh, I'm like, yeah. What made you want to do that? Did you just feel like, I want to check this out? I almost wanted to stop you when you when you sent me the message over Facebook saying, "Okay, I'm gonna I'm listening to your <laughs> podcast now." I'm like, "Don't um, <laughs> stop. actually." Like I said to you, there's a few um, very interesting segments of that that cast, mm. but Jason just makes me laugh, and um, yeah, his language gets a little bit out of hand, <laughs> and I think there's really no need for a lot. But anyway, that, that's how he talks. That's what makes him feel tough and cool. More power to him. Um, you know, he's probably going to listen to this By one. the way, folks, all those ex-girlfriends he spoke about, they're not real. <laughs> they're in his imagination, in his dreams. I think he's had about three his whole life. Oh, um, and Jason. I've at least two of them. You're getting dissed by my mum. And like I said, I love him to bits, but get real, Jace. Get in the real world, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know he's what? Like, he's like my adopted son too, by the way. So you know, yeah. I, I know he won't take this to heart. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, we're um, we, we're going on just uh, thirty-seven minutes now. Do you feel comfortable speaking a bit more? Okay, or? we'll stretch it to forty-eight. Let's go forty. Well, why not? We okay, can. What go else can another. we sign up on? I don't know. Is there any questions you want to ask me? Or mm, last time I said that you were going to teach me the Kama Sutra, so I better not. What? Uh, <laughs> what the hell are you talking I'm about? I'm talking about the mother son talk when I came and asked you if there's anything you need to know, and you said no. Oh. Um, is, but is there anything you'd need to know? So, so we won't touch that oh, one yeah. again. That was so awkward. That whole birds and the bees talk when I was. Mm. Well, I think I was four. Mm, was I no? I don't know. No, I was sixteen. No, no, no it's got to be younger than that. Surely I wouldn't have waited that long. Well, either way, I remember you telling me, and I was just like, I don't know how to break this to her. I've kind of... <laughs> this is my I've sheltered given... little boy that used to sit on the kitchen bench and say, Mama, I don't want to grow up. <laughs> I'm thinking that's the only thing I can't stop is you growing up. <laughs> and then he said, oh, well, I'm going to buy you a diamond ring when I grow up, Mum. Why? He said, because I love you that much. I'm still waiting for the damn ring. I've got everything else but the damn ring. Don't hold your breath, sweetheart. <laughs> 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 but... <laughs> Yeah, and then I discovered women and that, yeah, that really... Yeah, and realised his mum was just mum, she's not a woman. <laughs> no. <laughs> if anything, my mum was the most special woman and still is to this day, and yeah, you bitches got a lot to live up to right now, so... Yeah, well, that's another topic, isn't it? No. Yeah. Um, today's women, but we won't go there. I love them. We can, save it. we can save that for another time. Yep. Well, I'm going to sign off and um, get ready for bed because in real time it's just gone after midnight Mm -hmm. and um, we will talk soon. Okay. Well, thank you very much for coming on the podcast, Mum. I do appreciate you being a guest and hopefully we can do this again. And once again, as always, another big thing I'm trying to preach uh, on the end of my podcast here is if you have enjoyed this episode, please feel free to get in contact with me. Let me know uh, what you enjoyed. Um, you know, if, even what if you, you want like to hear what you like to hear, any set topics, questions, anything at all whatsoever, and don't forget to remind Ashley that he has the greatest mum in the world. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and well. he is a very, very lucky boy. <laughs> all right, I don't know Not about. All. I don't know how my mum's going to exit the room with that type of uh, head of ego, Best but <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's been a good podcast. It's been very different. Hopefully those out there listening have enjoyed. And um, Night, Jace. I hope you sleep well. 
Oh God, dude, stop mentioning his name because the next thing I'll hear from him is, Oh, see, your mum's thinking about me because like, I'm going to sleep, yeah? It's not. <laughs> he always has little cheap shots like that. Sorry, Jace, you're cute, but not that cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're cute and you're special, like a, yeah, like a, yeah, like like a, a special a, needs child. Like a special school around the corner. Special school, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, let's go. Anyway. Good night all. <laughs> But that's the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm Ash J. This is Ash J Podcasting. Here with my mother, Catherine Brinko. Catherine, anything else to say? No, just be happy. Stay happy. Be happy. Live life and prosper. Bye. Have a great day, guys. And uh, as always, I will catch you next time in another episode. Feedback is always appreciated. So get at me and uh, take care of yourself and each other. Have a great day, guys. Bye.